Right, so I'm joined by TriStars, legend, hero. He's playing in New York, obviously played for England. You know him, you can see him. Ben Foden, how are you, mate? I'm good, well, I've been better, but I'm good, mate, yeah. I think the world's been better, but we're all right. Are you? Season's done, oh, our season's finished. Yeah, mate, I heard that then. So, what is, <coughs> are you, so where are you? Are you in New York, did you say, or not? I'm in, I'm in Connecticut, so I just moved out to Connecticut. Uh, the missus uh, family have got this, like, summer house, this massive summer house in Connecticut. So, escape the city, because the city's getting a bit mental, so just getting out of there. Mate, talk, ah, all sorts of uh, uh, what are the rumours? The rumours were they were going to contain Manhattan, so like close off all the bridges in and out. So if you were in Manhattan, you were just stuck there. <clears throat> so we were like, fuck that, let's get the fuck out of Manhattan. My word. It's weird. Yeah. A weird one. What's going on with you? Where are you, in Scotland or London? No, I'm in the Cotswolds, mate, on lockdown. And I tell you what, it's actually the best place to be because... We're in isolation because one of the kids had a temperature and a cough and all that. The day that it came out on the news. Oh, wow. And who knows, mate. So we've got so the kids just passing the cough around each other. So we're not allowed. We are allowed out of the house. My point being, we live in the middle of nowhere. So the kids are out all day. And uh, we're very lucky, I think, because have you, have you been watching the news from over there? Of how bad it's in, in Italy and that? Yeah, 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 yeah. See, so yeah, it's bad in Italy and all that stuff, so, yeah. Well, it's gone, it's gone a bit mental in New York now. Like, Manhattan's, like, getting bigger and bigger every day, so... And no one's really giving a fuck either. They all, like, everyone's on the piss still, and all the bars are open. All the clothes is, like, anywhere you can have 500 people or more, so most bars are still open. Mate, that's like London, mate. They've locked London down <laughs> today, tonight, being... I don't even know what day it is. Friday, they've locked London yeah. down. People are just going about their business, mate, like normal. Um... I don't, I'd say today's the first day that I actually feel a bit anxious. I've been all right. And then I'm thinking, is my, t- is my chest tight? Do I want it? Do I need it? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I think when it hit, hit home with us on Friday, <clears throat> on fr- Friday last week, so this time last week, we were watching on the news and how mental everything was going. And it felt like it was like the walking dead was happening. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It was fucking crazy. Like we were like we were contemplating to go dick sporting goods to buy a shotgun because we were worried about looting and shit. I've bought an axe, so I've drawn some money out of the bank and I've put it in the. Well, I probably shouldn't say that, but well, you, <laughs> you won't find me. And uh, I bought an axe as well, mate. You just don't know. Like I'm thinking, I bought a load of wood. <clears throat> we're lucky, right? So we've got like pheasants and deers. And I'm genuinely, I'm driving on the road. So that's, we, me and my missus get an hour each a day where we can leave the house and go for a drive. And there's yeah. dead animals on the that's road. That's what you do. That's what, what you get do. away from life, get away from each other and the kids. Just that's what drive. we do. An hour, mate. And there's dead animals on the road. And I'm like, do I put these animals in the boot and get them home or not? I'm actually considering it. Oh, God. I'm, I'm scared, mate, now. But just because it's the news, I shouldn't watch the news. I, I, I fucking find it hilarious. The toilet roll thing is cracking me up as well. What's everyone's mad rush to go and buy toilet roll? If there's like, if there is like an apocalypse, the last thing I'll be hoarding is fucking toilet roll. I just fucking wash my ass in the shower. Do they have bidets days <laughs> in America or not? What? Do they have bidets days in America? Bidets? Yeah, my missus has one installed in her flat, like a little spray one. Yeah. Man, I took the piss out of them for years, mate. Who's laughing now? <clears throat> Although. <laughs> I, did, I didn't know this though. Right, she has like a stack of flannels in the corner, and and there's like a bin that she used them. I always thought she used flannels for like a makeup and shit. So like after I wash my hands, my face and stuff, if there wasn't a towel to use, I'd just get one out of the bin and like wipe my face with it. And then she told me the other day that she uses the flannels after she sprays her ass. <laughs> She's wiping my face. Oh my god! I tell you what, mate. You want want to use one of my flannels after that? You'd know straight away. (laughs) My good, mate. How is your missus, mate? She's taking a bit of shit now. I don't, mate. I'm I'm a quarter Chinese, and I can say I am disgusted by what's gone on over there. So I can say that it's not racist coming from me because I am a quarter Chinese. And so all you haters (laughs) out there, you might think I'm not. Me nan is. She looks like ET. And uh, I have to call her Papa, but like the thing is, that the thing, the crazy thing with that is, right? Why are people saying that it's it's racist to say that it's a fucking Ch- it's, it's a Chinese fucking flu? Like it's come from Wuhan, it's from China. Like where else does it come from? It's not racist to say that it's originated in China. 
In America, you can say anything, though. Here, you can't say oh, anything. Oh, freedom of speech. Dude, you should listen to the fucking radio and their podcasts and stuff that go out. No way they'd be allowed to go out anywhere. They're, like, homophobic. They're, yeah. like, racist. Say whatever the fuck you yeah, want. Yeah, they do, mate. Yeah, that's the thing. I've, I've, I listen Crazy. to the podcast, and it's kind of like sometimes <laughs> they're saying maybe what you might be thinking about different situations and scenarios, but you can't say it. But, mate, we'll leave there. But is she all right? How much shit did she take? I mean... No, nah, she loved it. She, like... with. So she saw the thing, but then she went on, like, the Daily Mail, like, comments, everyone was like, she's right, she's right, she's not wrong. There was only, like, one or two people who were like, oh, she's racist or whatever. Yeah. So she, she took it on the chin, to be fair, like a champ. And so yeah. you're, in, you're in Connecticut. How far is that from the biggest city, then? So what, what, what kind of place? Is that countryside? Is that, like, out the United States? Yeah, yeah, country. It's like country. Uh, they're, they're, like, we're in Waterford, so Connecticut's quite big. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's all part of New England, like, New York's part of New England. It's, like, an hour's drive from New York City. So any different there? Are they worried now or not? The old people? No, nah, we like we went down to like uh, what have we been doing? Because we're obviously bored. We're like because we, we're going to spend the summer here. Hopefully, when this mess clears up, and my kids are coming out, so we're like decorating a room and then getting a a nursery ready here. So we've been doing like decorating, like walls, stripping walls, and painting and shit. So we got a hardware store open with the Starbucks. That drive-through was open. Nice. And all the supermarkets and stuff are still open and stuff like that, so we've been fine. Well, it looks American because I can see wood. I don't know why I have this thing with America that's like wood and like you sat on a, a, a what is it, a ravine, a ravanda? Veranda, veranda. <laughs> veranda, yeah. <laughs> um, Ruggers, mate, let's talk a little bit about that. Um, MLR, MLR season has been canned. Now, yeah. who's made that decision? Does that come from government? I know Donald Trump, mate, who actually, I. I've got a love eight relationship with him. I'm not into politics, but I just think he gets things done. Anyway, has he stopped the MLR season? <laughs> so what's what's happening? Yeah, are, you, are, you getting, are you getting paid? Are they going to play the games again? How far into the season were you? So we were how many games were we? We're in, I think we're five games in. Yeah, five games in. We and we had a choice of playing our home. We had our first home game on March fifteenth against um, who were we against. We were playing Seattle, uh, and we had a choice to play a leadership meeting whether we wanted to play that game just as things were getting spicy. And we decided we weren't going to play it. Um, And then basically everything went turbo anyway in Manhattan. Everything got shut down, any sporting events. And then the NBA players, some of the players got um, diagnosed with coronavirus. They all shut down. Our head coach just uh, sent a message around saying we're going to stop playing for 30 days. Uh, we're going to come together in two weeks' time. To get, so do like two weeks of, have a week off, do a little bit of fitness on your own for a week, then come together at the end of week two to do like a mini pre-season for two weeks leading up to the next game. And then about four days in, rumours started to circulate that the MLR and um, we're going to can the season like a lot of the other American sports. And then uh, we've literally just hired a new guy, a new CEO. So... He was the one. He said, uh, "Join the team at the right point." In terms of like, uh, just join the team. And um, first, his first final action was to turn out to all the boys that the season's cancelled. So we had a big team meeting. Thirty-five was on on a on a conference call, and yeah, the the, the decision to, to finish the season and uh, can it all was was made. And uh, yeah, a little bit weird, really, because like you know, all of my years of playing, that's never happened. Uh, so doing it here, you know, a lot of my mates who are playing on the team as well were worried that, you know, would the would the MLR be able to survive this? We, it will, I'm pretty sure it will anyway. I think that, um, you know, I think it's at such an early stage of its um, development that, you know, I don't think any teams are making serious money off the back of it. And I think that, you know, owners and, and people involved know that, you know, it's a, it's a long process to get to a point where you're going to make money off this game. So uh, it's obviously not ideal um, for players. I, I'm not sure what's happening with the money situation. Um, there'll be, I think there's emails going around about it, but I've seen at the premierships, you know, there's like a 50% wage reduction or 25% wage reduction. I imagine it could be a similar thing to that. I don't know if it'll be... The, the good thing is that, the, you know, the wage cap for the MLR is very low, so it's not like people are getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, of course. So, um, so it won't be too... It's not going to be a massive drain on all the teams. But, you know, the, the disappointment is trying to like build the profile, you know, having home games and, and, and sort of generating that. But yeah. you know, there's plenty to work on for all the teams. We've already said we're going to sort of like turn our attention to 2021 and gear up towards that. Yeah, I'll come on to um, 
the, the rest <clears> of the rugby, but just a little bit around the salary. Yeah, like over here, it's been announced that I don't know if all the teams, Saracens have come out and said 25%, Gloucester have come out and said 25%, but I'm hearing other teams, and this is only rumours from what I'm hearing, I'm hearing Leicester are fucked. I've heard Wasps are on their knees. Um, so I think there'll be more to come. I, I don't know what's, you know, a CVC <coughs> will have to step in with all that money that they they paid. It's difficult, isn't it? Because we were, I was chatting about my mate um, who, who's, you know, well in the know in rugby and, and knows the agents and stuff like that. It's all relative, isn't it? You know, if you've mm. got Maritoji taking a 25% pay cut, yeah. You know, how much is that going to hurt him compared to someone that is on 30, 40 grand? But it's all relative. Do you know what I mean? It's easy yeah. to say that because he might have a load of assets that he needs to pay as well. But man, I, I Well, don't the, interesting, yeah. the interesting thing with that is, is like, so I'm, I'm guessing that the clubs are affected because they don't get like TV money and they don't get sponsorship deals. They all can. Yes, yeah, just, they've, all, they've all pulled out. They, they're, they're not paying them. So BT and uh, Premiership Rugby aren't paying, aren't paying uh, this month. Indefinitely. Okay, is, that, is that contracted? Is that like a contracted thing? Is that written in the contract and they don't have to, if the games don't go ahead, they don't get paid? No, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I don't think, that's, I think the, that's the weird thing where it falls. Like, what, what do contracts mean? Do the players, you know, Gloucester and, and all these teams, Saracens announcing the players taking these cuts, but do the players actually have to? in their contracts take a cut? No, they don't. They, I don't. They don't. Well, the RPA work. have stepped in and basically said they don't have to, but... They obviously have to. They don't have a choice, do they? It's not like there's yeah. no decision. Like everyone's in the same boat, aren't they? Like my sister's self-employed. I've got a couple of mates who work in factories, and they're literally. So one of my mates, Colskin, <coughs> has cancelled all his direct debits. He's like, really? mate, I ain't. You know, he said, come and get me. He's like, I've, I'm not getting paid. He's like, I got a bit of savings. He says, come and get me, mate, because I. I he said, why am I going to go into the red? He said, it's not my fault. Yeah. You know, it's uh, yeah, it's the Chinese, mate. Why? Wow. It's crazy, though, isn't it? Yeah, the Chinese should pay everyone. Um, but it's our fault. It's our fault, though. The, the, the crazy thing with that is it's just... Like, what about the players who are in the last year of the contract? This is the thing. John Barkley. So, John Barkley has got three or four payments left. He got offered a job to retire, was going to take the job. Yeah. And the job now, I've said, mate, we, you know, business development and whatever yeah. it is, leadership, and they're like, mate... We can't even afford <laughs> to pay you a pound. <laughs> Unless you want to work for Amazon or Tesco. You know, exactly. Really, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, talk to me then. Uh, Bastro, <laughs> you, you're Bastro. So I, I met um, Matthew. Matthew? How did, what did Ma say? Matthew, okay. Matthew. Matthew. Matthew Bastro. Yeah. So we filmed a documentary for the Barbarians and I thought he was going to yeah. hate me because Goody's abused him for years on the podcast. But what a lovely bloke. <laughs> What a look. Oh, he's a top boy, yeah. Uh, how's he settled in this? Um, right, okay, so the, the thing with Bastro is this, like, he is your typical Frenchman, you know? So he, <clears throat> when uh, things aren't going well, he's, like, moans a lot, he throws his arms a lot, and he's just like that. <clears throat> and people didn't get him, like, uh, he, you know, he had run-ins with Greg, our head coach, he had run-ins with Butcher, our captain, because they're so, like, oh, everything needs to be, like, Butcher's, Butchering him are the complete opposite people, you know. Bastro's played the game for a long time. You know, he's played at the highest level, gone to World Cups, Captain France. So obviously, he has the calibre. And, and so then Butch sees this guy coming in and thinks he's going to, you know, reinvent the wheel and he, he's going to be a major force for us. And then in training, he's like, you know, dropping the ball on the foot, chipping it through and, you know, doing the typical French flair thing. And Butch is like what's this guy doing? He's supposed to be like a straight truck in 12 or straight truck in 13. And they just <clears throat> clashed. But for me, it's a shame the season's finished because Bastro was really growing into his role, if you know what I mean. He, he, it takes a while to settle into American rugby as well. And for me, Bastro was never going to be the kind of player that came through and was making 40-yard breaks. What he was going to do was, you know, make three guys try and tackle him and offload it and suck in defenders and free up space for, for more of us. And he'd moved to number eight and we were starting to use him quite well. And you can see in the last two or three games, he was starting to come on leaps and bounds because he was getting more and more involved in the game. And then, you know, people like Butch and Greg were saying, listen, they didn't care what he was doing on the training field as long as he brought it at the weekend, which he was starting to do. So <laughs> everything, was, yeah. everything was starting to get, get, get into a role and stuff. So I'm disappointed for him because I don't know how many years he's, he's 
I think he's only doing the one year. I'm not yeah, that's sure. what I mean. Is that it then for him? No. I don't really know. Yeah. I, um, you know, after the first game, <laughs> uh, we stayed in Vegas and obviously he was not happy after the first game. His agent was on the phone and Leon was saying they're loving back. Why? What, what, why after the first food. game? What happened after the first game? Well, we got spanked in the first game by a uh, new franchise, New England, uh, who are our local rivals. And it was uh, <clears throat> played in, so there's this Vegas weekend and they messed it up massively because they moved it. It was supposed to be this brand new uh, baseball stadium at the top of the range. was new, you know, 5G with the grass with woven in with the plastic. and would have been amazing. So I went and did the launch there and looked at it and was like, this is be class. It's near the strip. And everyone could get there. And then they changed it last minute. I don't know why it messed up. And suddenly all the promotion was useless because we'd shot it all there saying it's all this baseball park. It then moved to where the sevens was. Uh, and I don't know if you've seen that pitch, but it is hard dry as a bone and it's like a big old stadium that's sort of like it's getting knocked down to because it's like a wind tunnel mm. literally with all all in case around but one open end and it was so windy and you must have seen the try that they scored where he does a Gary Owen and it bounces twice hits the crossbar and the guy gets it and scores the try it was just one of those games where it's like the, the game was ruined by the weather yeah and and where it was played, and I could see Basher was like, I am not sticking around to play here. It was like, really? one, man, one man and his dog there. It was just like... I don't know what yeah, he expected, I, though. Sorry? I don't know what he was expecting, though. Do you know what I mean? If he's... Yeah, well, the thing is, then, then, then we went to... Then you go and play in Atlanta, in Atlanta, and, and they have a full capacity. I mean, it's only 3,500, mm. but it's full. Uh, you go to San Diego, and they've got 5,500, yeah, and they're course. full. Do you know what I mean? Teams are starting to get big crowds there and stuff but the Vegas thing was just really poorly you know it was it was a bit of a mess up by the MLR because they wanted to do a big opening week and they had like four games going on there and it would have been really good if they stuck to the original plan because they did promo I, I did a TV thing when I was out there early on the season and but all of that was you know null and void because we moved moved where the fixture was so we're all saying get down to Vegas ballpark to do this so all the stuff on the internet was all rubbish as well so the promo behind it the organisation just fell through last minute and it all got moved around and all got lost a little bit so I think they were a bit disappointed with how it all went but saying that you know we 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 had another game in Vegas the next week so we managed to write that wrong once we you know we won that game and Bastro felt a little bit better but after that first game he was yeah, <laughs> he was not famous gone did he Ken's go out? Did, did he... Money, money, money offers were coming in and he was thinking I'm packing my bags. Mr. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, my word. So, did he go out with the lads after? Was he all right? Yeah, so I I took a... Yeah, so I organised a massive night out in Vegas, yeah. It was on Sunday. Team so we Dreyers. And he was... Um, so, one of the things he was doing while he was here, I think, to like make things more comfortable for him when he was in New York, is he was doing a documentary with Canal. Who were doing his last last couple of months at Toulon? Yeah, they did it at the bar me. bars. They did it at the bar yeah, bars. Well, yeah. bars. Yeah, and then they were doing his move to New York and filming the first game. So they did the first game. Anyway, these couple of lads who were doing the filming were, were good boys, and they were obviously good mates of Bastro. And so they came along, and we all, you know, like twenty four of us all went out, had got a massive table in one of these massive nightclubs in Vegas, and just cut loose, uh, which I think perked him up a little bit. <laughs> he needed it. He needed it. He needed it. Yeah, he needed looking after. So, yeah, that, I think you know, I think he likes that side of it, the social side of mm. it, the, the going out, the boys and stuff. But he, I think he's missing his family as well because his family weren't out there. So, and did they? Are they, they, were they never get out there. <laughs> yeah, they're out there now. He's stuck in New York. I, I see his Instagrams all the time. He's just in the basement, out with his, with his kid and his missus. So, is he in the basement in Harlem or not? No, 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 no. He got like a. A really nice flat in uh, Chelsea, I think. Oh, okay. Oh, no, in the financial district, I think it's in more lower village. Yeah, good on him. Um, and then the other players in the MLR. So I've heard Marnonu is absolutely carving up. Well, he's in the team of the week every week. I don't know whether it's because it's Marnonu. Yeah. Is he carving up? He is carving up, yeah. he's. Um, <clears throat> to be fair, he's in a very good San Diego team, but he's added value to them. They've, they're, they've got a good squad of players. Um, but he has been carving up, yeah. He's been he's been he's been dist- distributing as well, you see, which is you know everyone just races in to try and hammer him. He's throwing big miss passes out to wingers and stuff. So yeah, he's, he's definitely still got it. How old is he? Thirty seven. Well, I don't think it matters, mate. He's played for the All Blacks that many times. He'll probably play. <laughs> you know what I mean? It could be fifty. It don't really matter. Yeah, I saw that uh, Rennie Ranger got was was uh, player of the week in one week for Colorado. Scored two tries and 
at like 140 meters round as well. Goodness, so. mate. Because he, yeah. I'd say Rennie's probably in his prime. I was at Montpellier with Rennie Ranger and he was like Bassero was in his first week at New York. Rennie Ranger weren't interested. He was smoking on the way to the training pitch. He, but he was like there. He was like the up and coming talent in New Zealand. So, no, mate, yeah. he, he's he's classy. Is anyone else? Anyone else standing out there? Because like, I don't know. Like now, the, the perception is maybe it's what me and you did doing your feature there that everyone wants to go to an yeah. MLR. But everyone, everyone just, wants to. Well, it doesn't just seem like a pension. Like the beast is there as well. Yeah, the beast is there. Uh, Frank Halai signed with. Um... Austin scored on his debut. Uh, a few guys lost their visa, didn't they? Because uh, I think Ashley Cooper was supposed to go. And Drew Mitchell was coming. To, Drew Mitchell was coming to us. Like that was a done deal as well. I think he was going to come to us for the end of the season. But the new two franchises, so they're, they're adding two like every year, and the two new ones are Dallas and LA. So they're going to, be, you know, the LA one's going to be a massive pull. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if, if guys like Danny Cipriani is looking to get out there. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No, really. Yeah. Well, I, I, I can do it. Sips and he was he, he was asking about the league and stuff, and you know I think the wages will go up next year because the interest in it. This guy from the F forty five, Jim Jimmo, the guy mm-hmm. he's bought three of the teams, Austin Gilgrown. He's he's got a new drink called the Gil. You know his name is Gil Chris or something like that, and he's got a new drink called the Gil Grony. Scottish then? Uh, Could be Scottish, maybe. Sorry, Gil Chris is Scottish. I no, think. He's, he's Australian, I think. He's the guy who, who owns F45. Yeah, gym. yeah. But he's bought Austin. He's bought the team. He's bought Utah. And then he's bought the LA team. So he's got three teams now, this guy. So he's mega money. Um, but he's using the Austin one to release his new drink that he's bringing out, which is, I don't know whether it's genius or craziness. I'm not really sure. But this team have now changed the name from Austin Elite to Austin Gilgronies, and their colour is orange and you know they've, they've got a full setup there now as well with the pitch and all that sort of stuff. So he's put some money in. Um, going to Houston and seeing their pitch where we played, they've got a proper stadium set up there now as well. Uh, their guys oil money, so you know they're you know, they're willing to get stuck in and stuff. So I think the money will go up next year for to try and intra- attract more big name players. And the pro- you know there's always ways around it as well. You know the old Saracens trick. Yeah, so tell me about that then, because I, Matt, I'm so jealous, mate, that I've you know I, I didn't have the opportunity to play in the MLR. But a lot of the people are asking questions, and I know that we had a kind yeah. of informal chat about it. But you, you don't get someone like Marmonu for thirty grand, do you? Or do you? Do you know what I mean? You don't get someone like the Beast who uh, just won a World uh, Cup know, and goes. Where's that money coming from to pay these? Do you so think? I, I think there's there's different roles you can get. You can obviously there's. Listen, so there's one contract you'll get with the MLR, and basically what teams do, it's, it's different, like this is, I don't know where, why this happens, but basically all the teams pay their money into a pot of money to the MLR who look after all the money, do you know what I mean? So say the, say the wage cap is a million quid. Everyone pays a million quid into a pot, and then the MLR pay your players, so then you have a million quid to dish out to your squad of 35 players or whatever. So everyone gets 35 grand, 40 grand, 50 grand, or whatever. I think the most you can get is like 45 grand or whatever. And then the MLR pay you. So the MLR are in charge of that. So the teams have given all their money to pay the players. So the way around it is um, housing, cars, things like that. So obviously that's very important for the New York guys because the most you know most expensive thing in New York is, is, is housing. You know, it costs three grand a month to live in a normal apartment. So and if you want a big apartment, it costs you like five to eight grand a month. So to get that on top of your, you know, you, you can take a hit on your money. So you can just say, I'll get, I'll get paid $25,000 as long as they pay my housing, which they do because they have a few houses, a few houses in Staten Island. We talked about the Harlem house before, and that's the way they get around it. Also, there's other roles you can get. You can get like the beast is on a coaching role as well. So he'll get his MLR money. And then he'll also agree a coaching role, okay. which could be anything from fifty to a hundred thousand um, dollars. They have other roles like ambassadors of rugby, which means that you go around to schools and stuff and, and do some coaching and talk about you know, try and expand the brand of rugby. Um, so there's different ways to go about it, you know, without being. There's no one out here getting paid three hundred thousand, you know, dollars or anything like that. Though. There's no mad money. You're normally coming for the experience. They're guys on the way out. They want to, you know, the season's only six months long, so you can sort of take a break and do a small season, save your body, um, and, and look to do something different or run it alongside. You know, these 
the thing with me in New York, there's just so many things to, to do there as well. You know, that there's a massive opportunity as well with the MLR now to try and break into the TV roles. Obviously, in England, when you look at BT, BT Sport and, and you know stuff that you and Goody are doing, it's very saturated now. You hear about all these podcasts, you hear about all these TV shows, whereas that's still, you know, yet to be born out here, mm. here in America. So for me, that's the next steps that I want to take. I want to try and get involved in. Um, you know, help, helping build a wrap-up show, helping build, you know, a highlights TV programme that showcases the MLR, not just New York, but, you know, New York rugby fans will also learn about all the other teams and the league and how it's all going. Because what I'm aware of at the moment is there's, there's 12 different teams, but the fans of each team don't really know about any other team unless they come to the city. They don't really know what's gone on in the fixture. Of, you, know, you know, New York might play Seattle at the weekend, but Colorado played Austin and we... The fans in, in, in New York don't know about that game. They're just interested in... Do you know what I mean? So yeah, we need a, a programme that brings it all together to sort of like... To, to get the the hype of the MLR because they, they know there's a rugby New York team that's professional. Do they know it's part of Major League Rugby and the other teams are involved? But not yet, I don't think so. I think the next step for that is to have a TV platform. You know, the games are shown on TV, but it needs to have like a Monday night wrap-up where you see all the fixtures, all the results, all the highlights and... So that's one thing that I'm looking to do. Class. Any more projects on the horizon? Celebrity stuff, mate. In fact, let's forget about you. Let's forget <laughs> about you. Let's talk about the last show, Celebrity X Factor, and talk about he's no longer a friend of mine anymore, Tom Evans. How, uh, how's Tom? Is he blanked yet? Well, I think I've blocked him on social. <clears throat> Weirdly, I talked to Nicole more than I talked to Tommy. Oh, God. He's uh, a busy boy. Um, actually, when I was in. Um, where did we play last? We were in San Diego after the game and we went to um, a karaoke ugly bar, you know, where the girls get on the bar and dance. Oh, no, no. <laughs> and basically, uh, the Pussycat Dolls came on and I had a few drinks anyway, so I was like laughing and the boys were singing, so I took like a video of me singing Pan to the Boys and the girls on the bar and sent it to Nicole on, on Instagram and said, oh, like, I'm uh, missing you and Tommy. Like, uh, And she started saying, oh, because the Pussycat Dolls are on tour at the moment. I think they're in Australia, isn't it? But they're doing like a world tour. And she was like, oh, when we come to London, she wants to get the TriStar Boys back together to be an opening act. <laughs> Four piece, and you want to get involved? <laughs> and she was saying, and I was like, I don't dangle that carrot in front of me, because, you know, I'm coming towards the end of my rugby. And she was like, genuine. Was like, she was like, deadly serious. She want to get the boys back to open act for us in, in the UK. So I was like, I'm, I'm all in, in but... Coronavirus is struck. I think they've gone. I don't think they're doing their tour anymore. So dreams are broken, mate. Dreams are broken. I'm gutted, buddy. and I love carrots as well. Uh, <laughs> Fode, thanks very much for joining me on the lockdown. Get it? Lockdown. Yeah, lockdown. The lockdown. Properly lockdown. And uh, good luck with everything, mate. And mate, we'll keep connected. And if the carrots being dangled again, you know where I am, mate. Uh, of course, mate. We're always looking to get a four star. Cheers, buddy. <laughs> All right, bye.